Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I went from spoon to jewelry. Keep watching. Welcome to Metal Smith Journey. My name is Joy and I'm a jeweler transitioning from wire wrap jewelry to Metal Smith Journey. Here on this channel, I post videos of making jewelry, jewelry hacks, tips, and shopping, how to get discounts and stuff like that. You can check out my channel and subscribe to see more videos like this. Recently, Pinterest has been sending me emails of jewelry made from cutlery and I decided to try that out. And I've noticed that um, spoons are kind of left out from a more detailed transformation. Usually only the tail end is used most of the time. So I decided as the kind generous person that I am to include um, the spoons in the club of transformation. Now to the video of today. I added downstairs the kitchen drawer of forgotten cutlery and I decided to get me four spoons. Now, if for some reason you've tried to hammer a spoon head before, you'll notice that the hammer would most likely bounce back. This is because the metal is hardened. In order to change the structure of the metal and to make it softer, I had to handle it with fire and quench it immediately. Since I couldn't get my Dremel butane touch to all the lockdown things over, I tried to use the home cooker. Please don't try this at home, I do not recommend this in any way. After handling and quenching immediately, I was able to hammer the head relatively flat quite easily. If you notice the purplish color around the area I heated, that is the fire scale or fire stain. A few people leave it on as a nice patina, but as most people, I wanted it off in order to have a shiny surface. Chemical pickles is usually used to get rid of the fire scale, but I let alum 2 does the trick plus it's cheaper, more accessible and environmentally friendly. So I cut off the heads of the spoon and then used the alum to pickle it. It turned out great and so far I spent zero naira on this project so as you can imagine I was very I was really excited to be using a proper jeweler's blade for the first time and weirdly enough I was looking forward to breaking my first blade and that didn't take very long to happen. I was super thrilled at first. At first. I didn't let that deter me so I kept on sewing and sewing and sewing. And sewing. After this, I decided to get all my distress out by hammering the pieces even flatter and boy did it feel good. The design plan was to make a hinged pendant from four metal pieces, two on one side and two on the other side, a bird profile in front and a family picture inside. The two pieces on each side would be riveted together and the hinge would hold the two sides together. Since no one in my family would spend that much money on silverware, all the spoons I'm using for this project are stainless steel and for some reason they did not agree with my saw blade. I mourned the loss of 5 of my saw blades before eventually I decided to give up and make the same project with copper. And as you can see, that turned out great for a first attempt. You can check out the video for how I made this pendant to the link in the description below. If you haven't subscribed by this time yet, please subscribe and like the about two weeks after, I decided that the death of my blades could not be in vain, so I went back to work. However, I was abandoning that project for a new one, a treble clef pendant. Since the Wireworks version is one of my best sellers in my store, I decided to try it out. I mean, how hard could it be? The ink in the home printer was out and I couldn't go out to print, so I decided to draw instead. I mean, how hard could that be, right? Next, I set up my saw peg and saw frame so that I could begin sewing. Before sewing, I had to make holes in order to be able to sew out the inner patterns. Usually, I use a hammer and a nail to create a dent before going in with my rotary tool, which I'm still trying to learn how to use. I got the tool from Jumia and it's been great so far, although not ideal for jewelry. I will be using this in the meantime till I get my fordom, then I'll be using this for my DIY project. The tool was taking forever to drill, maybe I used the wrong bit or something, I wasn't exactly interested. 
So I went back to my nail and hammer which got the work done much quicker. It seemed a lot easier to sew out this time around. Maybe it's because of the 9 hours of beauty sleep I had earlier or maybe it's because of the candle wax I used for lubricant. Who knows? After sewing out, the result was quite um, unexpected. Comparing it to the wire work that I usually make, you can see there's a lot of differences that I did not account for, so I decided to give it another go. After the same process of hammering and sewing, it came out significantly better than the first. Now these are the brave blades that lost their lives to the unforgiving steel. They will forever be remembered. After the hammering and the drilling, the piece was no longer flat, so I decided to make it completely flat and also to take out my anger for all the blades that I lost. The rubber hammer wasn't doing so much for me, so I switched it. After that, I went on to sanding with various very ideal sanding papers. Let's just say I specialize in improvisation, as you saw in the case of the candle wax for lubricant, the alum for pickles, the gas cooker for the retained touch. It's not something I would recommend, but I get away with it sometimes. So I sanded and sanded and filed. I accidentally made the tail crooked in the process. Oops. I couldn't do too much with the um, needle file because I didn't want to cross contaminate metal, whatever that means. When I was done with that, I threw on a bill and then the chain. And here's the final result. It's a pretty simple pendant here. Thank you guys for watching this video. I have been very skeptical about posting anything during this time, especially about something non-essential as jewelry but i just had to get this video out there i don't know what is the weirdest thing you've ever done with a spoon you can put it in the comments below and subscribe if you haven't please do like this video if you haven't and you can watch the video of how i made the hinge pendant is in the description below you can also follow me on instagram at metalsmith journey i usually post as much of the promos of most of my favorite brands jewelry brands nigerian brands of the promos that they have on my Instagram stories so just follow that for more. Anyhow, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. Stay safe guys.